my god. I'm gonna be honest, if I wasn't here with a group like this, I would be running. YouTube. Hello. Very exciting day today. Um, I am on my way to the Bracken Cave Bat Preserve. It is the largest bat colony in the world. I've been asked by Bat Conservation International to make some content there to raise some awareness for bats and do some fundraising. I am very excited. Uh, we went to the Austin Bat Bridge a while ago um, to show you guys bats and there's thought to be like one and a half million bats there. This cave has 15 million bats. So it's a lot more. This is a fit for the day. I have my bug shirt. I'm ready to go. Let's go see some bats. Bracken Cave, best we can figure is somewhere around 10,000 years ago, uh, the bats moved into the cave. Uh, the cave was formed millions of years ago, but there was a collapse of the ceiling and it created the sinkhole <clears throat> and exposed the cave to the surface. And some time after that, the bats moved in and just steadily got, the colony size grew to somewhere around 15, 20 million now. Are you ready? This is so crazy. It's it, like when we walked up here, Space and I were like, oh my God, look at this. That's a freaking cave. <laughs> That's the cave, they're all in there. So yeah, actual void. They used to mine over there during like the Civil War and there's 52 feet of rock to bust through to get into the cave. And then it's 117 feet down to the floor of the cave, but then there's 100 feet of guano bat poop in that cave as well. So it's like unimaginably massive. The bats are mining for gold. No, actually they're mining for guano, for bat poop, because they use bat poop for fertilizer and for gunpowder. Did anybody know that? Am I the only one that didn't know that? I'm definitely not the only person that didn't know that. <laughs> also, you guys will not believe the smell here. I don't really know how to describe it. It's like very, <laughs> Space just said it's so bad. It doesn't smell like another, it kind of smells like reptile poop a little bit. Like very stale. Woo, <laughs> scared me. <laughs> Hello. Guys, a friend. I knew I needed to put my boots on today. I think that's a coach whip. He was saying, oh, it's okay, bye. He was saying that coach whips will hang out at the base of the cave and they'll prop themselves up at the bottom of the cave and wait for bats to fly out and then grab them. <laughs> oh my God, I just got like a really good inhale. <coughs> okay, well, this is like a, an entry to the cave. This is where they were mining. Yeah, we gotta keep moving. And then over here, this was a Civil War bunker because they would guard what they were mining. Yes, um, bats are really important for people for a lot of different reasons. Um, I think the biggest reason around here is pest control. In other countries, they are really important for seed dispersal, like fruit eating bats. Um, so they're really important for, especially like areas that have been deforested. They pollinate hundreds of plants and a lot of economically important ones too. So they're important for humans in a variety of ways. Very soon, the bats will start emerging from that giant cave. Not only is there a hundred feet of bat guano, bat poop, in the bottom of this cave. There's also ground beetles that will eat your flesh. So the floor of the cave is covered with our domestic flesh-eating beetles. So this is what a little video clip of the floor of the cave and the beetles. And the guano is kind of gray. The beetles actually eat the bat poop. So it's like beetle poop and bat poop combined. But that's what the floor of the cave looks like with all the beetles. Fran said that they come out at a rate of about 13,000 bats per minute. Um, this can last anywhere up to three hours, but again, it'll probably get dark before we see all of the bats emerge out of this cave. Um, they've described it as a bat tornado. So they literally drop out here and start circling up into the sky. Look at that, there's a porcupine. That's a North American porcupine. She's got a laser pointer to show you where she is. I do a really good impression, but now's not the time. Oh my God, bats. Oh, this is gonna be, cr do you see them in there? I don't think you guys are gonna be able to see that, but there is, they're circling inside the cave. They're flying. They like dropped from the ceiling. Oh my God, they came out so fast. I can't believe we can just sit here, like so close to them. Oh my God. I'm gonna be honest, if I wasn't here with a group like this, I would be running. They're leaving to feed tonight, so they go out and they, they feed all night and then come back in the morning. The way that they originally found this cave was in the 1800s and it was because of this, I'm calling it a bat river, but that's not what it's called, in the sky. There were so many bats, they thought that they were smoke trails and so people followed the smoke trails back to this site thinking that something was on fire. But it was 15 million bats. 
Here comes a Swainson's oh. hawk here on the left. A hawk? Yeah, so he just grabbed a bat. There's he another can, one. Yeah. No. Circle of life. Vortex that you see, or, or um, bat nato as we call it. So this colony of bats is made up of thousands of smaller colonies of bats that have migrated from their roost in Mexico to Texas. So your family size could be, let's say there's 50,000 and you all migrated here and you're in Bracken Cave. And when they go to leave, they go as groups, they're migratory groups. So we think one of the advantages of the vortex is all those family members that get to drop off the ceiling of the cave and are flying around in the circle, it allows them time to all get together so they all go to the same place when they're foraging for food. All right, so they're gonna head out at least 60 miles from here and up to 10,000 feet in altitude. And then they're out all night long feeding and they start coming back in around 5.30 in the morning. So when they're coming back in, they're coming in from hundreds of feet up in the air. So it literally rains bats because they want to get into the cave as quickly as possible because the hawks are back here to catch bats for breakfast. Don't be worried that we're missing stuff because there's 15 million bats in the cave. Also, Case reminded me, thank you. It's not just the largest colony of bats in the world, it's the largest colony of mammals in the world. How is the smell? It's pretty extreme. <laughs> a lot of people are like, oh, cheetahs are the fastest mammal in the world. They run at like, what, 70 miles an hour? No, Mexican free-tailed bats are mammals and they can fly, I think, over 100 miles an hour. They're not the fastest animal because peregrine falcons can dive faster, but they're like insanely fast for a mammal. Fastest mammal on the planet. I think one of the best things that people can do is just learn about bats and teach people about bats. Um, so just educate more directly with BCI. Donating is always helpful. Um, we are a nonprofit and we do work around the world, so it's always helpful. And if you live in the area, volunteering. We have so many volunteer opportunities, a lot to do with bats and a lot not to do with bats. Um, so there's kind of a little something for everyone, but that's always needed. <laughs> bats. So many bats. I want to touch it. <laughs> Excuse me, what does it look like in there? They're really fast. Oh, what are you going to eat tonight, sir? Bugs, 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 bugs. <laughs> yes. Their little ears, you can see their little ears because no, they're you so can. close. No, you cannot. Peach, wow. look, you gotta, you gotta lock in on one bat and look at their ears, they're so cute. Oh my gosh. Somebody asked about their migration, or if they hibernate. So these bats migrate, so they migrate from to Mexico around November when we get our first good cold snap, mm -hmm. usually around Thanksgiving. They'll migrate south to Mexico, spend the winter, and they start coming back in mid-February to the hill country. And they come back oh. to this exact cave? They come back to this exact cave, and some of the bats actually use this cave as a layover. So this mm. is not their where they're going to end up for the summer. They'll come in, rest, feed in the area, and then move on to wherever the bat hotel, bat hotel, bat Airbnb. <laughs> That's a pretty impressive migration for such a little there are cameras. bat. Right. They're only 15 grams. They're flying to Mexico and back. It's incredible. Two quarters in your hand and that's how much one of these bats weigh. They weigh two quarters and they're the size of both your thumbs put together. So cool. Bat Conservation International does really important work to protect these bats uh, and protect this cave that they're in and do research and educate people about how important they are. Um, make sure to go check BCI out. It's in the description. <laughs>